Okay, so Pi News episode 72 starts with a very positive note. There's a piece of hardware on my desk that I can't show you, but this story on the Raspberry Pi website is great news. So from Eben Upton, supply chain update, it's good news. For the first time in a couple of years of semiconductor supply chain hell, we've got some good news for you. And they've also got some pictures of Raspberry Pis being made in Wales. If you tried to buy pretty much anything recently, you'll realise that we're in the midst of a global supply chain crisis affecting everything from cement and fence posts to jewellery and clothing. Persistent shortages of the semiconductor devices we use to build Raspberry Pi single wall computers and modules has been particularly challenging for us and a lot of other tech businesses to manage. Happy Christmas. As a thank you to our army of very patient enthusiasts, some not so patient uh, customers in the run up to the holiday season this year, we've been able to set aside a little over 100,000 units split across 0W, 3A+, and the 2 gig and 4 gig variants of Raspberry Pi 4. It's a shame there's no 0 2Ws in there because that's a great model, but it's great to see Raspberry Pi 4 models coming. So they're available for single unit sales. These are following into the approved reseller channel now, and this is already translating into better availability figures on Raspberry Pi Locator. While we're not quite out of the woods yet, things are certainly improving. For those of you looking to buy Raspberry Pi for hobby projects or prototyping, the advice we gave back in April still holds. Always buy from an approved reseller. They're under contract with us to sell at the recommended price. It also says recovery ahead. For a variety of reasons, we leave 2022 with much better visibility of our future silicon supply chain than we entered with. As a result, we can say with confidence that after a lean first quarter, we expect supply to recover to pre-pandemic levels in the second quarter of 2023 and to be unlimited in the second half of the year. And you can see there's a nice big box of pies. I won't go through all of it, but I'll put a link in the description. Raspberry Pi Zero cost increase, an unpleasant side effect of the supply chain crisis has been an increase in the cost of pretty much every component that goes into a Raspberry Pi. We generally absorb the cost increases ourselves, holding the prices of our products constant and making less profit on each unit. The exceptions have been the 2 gig variant of the Raspberry Pi 4, which we returned to its original $45 price point. So the Zero is going to go from $5 to $10 and the Zero W from $10 to $15. And there's a great picture of Pi 4s here. Uh, I thought it was a server rack at first, but they're obviously in manufacture and the, uh, the, the board needs to be split. And whilst I'm very excited about the Orange Pi 5, which is being delivered any day now to me, uh, I would rather it was a Raspberry Pi 5. Uh, and even if you gave me all the choice of all the single board computers, I would probably pick a Raspberry Pi 4 just for the overwhelming support and the things you can do with it. So let's have a look at RPI Locator and see if it's affected on there yet. I think this has only recently come out. Okay, so nothing there at the moment, but it's worth just keep refreshing it, keep watching it, because uh, obviously that stock is gonna show up at some point, which hopefully could mean an end to this sort of price gouging. 499 for a RetroPie console with a uh, four gig Raspberry Pi 4. Yeah, hopefully those days are over. So from Facebook, uh, Berry Server, which hasn't been maintained very much recently. The message here, hi there, I've been busy as a web developer server admin. Seven months have passed without any OS image update. I'll dedicate more time to it from now on, starting right now. I fixed the support request form at the website. I'm checking support request emails again. Next week, I'll upgrade. I believe more than 50 OS images. And if we scroll down in the post, fun fact, the main Berry Boot developer is Floris Boss, who is also the writer of Noobs and the Raspberry Pi Imager at Raspberry Pi Foundation. If you don't know what Berry Boot is, it's uh, a very good piece of software that allows you to run multiple operating systems off one drive. Also, you can create your own images and uh, convert them. I've got separate videos on that. But yeah, great to see that's being maintained. Be nice to see my KDE Plasma build on there. So new software updates, uh, Diet Pi release version 8.11, very nice lightweight operating system. Uh, we also had the release of Pi Mega 3. Now Pi Mega is, uh, well for me, it's a huge amount of Amiga games which are very easy to play and configure and save and favorite. And this is the maintainer of it, Chris Edwards Restoration on YouTube. So I'll put a link to his video definitely worth checking out. There are thousands of Amiga games and there's some real gems in there. So I will be trying that in the future. But if you check out his video, he tells you all about it, goes through all the ins and outs of it. There's loads more it does aside from games. I use it for the Amiga games, but there's loads more aside it does and definitely worth checking out. We've also had updates from Omniron. Uh, so that officially supports the Raspberry Pi 4 and they're on Android 13 and a very good version of Android worth checking out as well. 
from Facebook, this project working on a low power SDR radio cyber deck build. Just thought it looked really nice as an image. There's this one as well, which shows I quite like the placement of these ports, or that means that must mean that lid's quite chunky. But uh, yeah, really, really smart looking piece of kit. Looks like a military grade laptop with those colours. Saw this uh, about car audio on the Raspberry Pi. Now I've never tried it. I remember uh, a company reached out to me and, and was going to send me some software and it, I think for some reason something didn't work and it, it never carried on. But uh, I know there are lots of good solutions. I do see various things about, but let me know if you use a Raspberry Pi for your in-car audio system, what you use. But you can see here it's mounted behind a traditional head unit, which is a cool way of doing it because nobody's going to nick a well, I say that, I said that about doorbells. It's less likely that someone's going to try and steal uh, a piece of car audio that looks like this. Yeah, it's a CD slot there, but you can see there's a Pico in the back. Uh, it looks like a Raspberry Pi 4 here upside down and various different screens and things. But it, yeah, it looks it looked like a really interesting post. And some more builds from RetroPie Official on Facebook. RetroPie Lite CM4 Pi handheld now open source on GitHub. Based on the CM4 handheld, we built the RetroLite CM4. And there's loads of details there, loads of images. Really nice to see something like this that you can build yourself. It's a nice looking piece of kit. And you can see, oh, it looks, well, in this case, it looks like it comes with a Pi. So I don't know what sort of price you're going to look for for that. Even a dock. Yeah, very neat. And I saw this from Keyboard Dweebs. Every keyboard is open source and available. You can see there's a Raspberry Pi Pico in the middle of this and some nice raised keys and there's various different bits of kit you can use if you want to build your own keyboard. Next up, I had a comment from someone, and that's not me being lazy, uh, their name on YouTube is someone, and uh, it was about a Raspberry Pi power over ethernet adapter, and uh, you can see here, mini power over ethernet hat. So power over ethernet basically means that you can plug an ethernet cable into the device, and it uses that for power. Very cool for uh, if you've got, say, remote cameras or remote sh machinery and you haven't got mains sockets there, as long as you can get an Ethernet connection to it, you've got the Internet and you've also got power. But I haven't got a power over Ethernet router. I don't really need one, um, but uh, I thought I'd check it out. And it does look very cool. And the video goes through and describes it. It works with a Pi 3 and a Pi 4, and it even fits in a case. So very, very neat. Next up from raspberrypi.com, Evan Upton's been to Africa, it looks like. Uh, so made in Kenya, we're delighted to say that as of this week, and this was 21st November, we're manufacturing Raspberry Pi Pico for the African market in Kenya. In the story, it mentions that most things are made in South Wales, uh, which is not too far from me. I'm in North Devon. Over the following decade, we progressively relocated our production to the UK to the point where today, almost all Raspberry Pi products are manufactured four hours down the road from Pi Towers in Pencoed. From there, we export them to customers all over the world. So Pico W, which is from which is made in Japan, and the POE hat, which is built in China. Starting this week, we'll be building Raspberry Pi Pico products for the African market at Gearbox Europlacer in Nairobi. Nice to see a whole board of Picos. But in due course, they hope to add others, including the Pico W and Zero Two W, one of my favourites. And they mention why it's a good idea for them to to manufacture in other countries. So I'll put a link in the description if you want to read more of that. Bit more car audio here. Uh, so I saw this on Reddit, OSMC, which is a media center, and Cody on Pi 3 as my car stereo. And you can see there's a Pi mounted on the back of this monitor here. And in the comments, loads of people talk about Open Auto Pro. Uh, so I'm wondering if that's one of the better uh, softwares to use on a Pi in a car. And I had a look at Open Auto Pro. It does look very cool. Uh, it is a paid for product, but there is all sorts of functionality and it yeah, it looks really smart from all this. So what we're looking at, $29. You pay only once for the application and have one year updates free of charge. So let me know in the comments if you use Open Auto Pro and if you think it's the best car audio solution when using a Pi. I saw this thread on Reddit the other day. A question for people who have used other Raspberry Pi like devices. I love the Raspberry Pi and recently have been seeing more and more computers that resemble a Raspberry Pi, but not Raspberry Pis. For people who have used other devices and still like the Raspberry Pi the best, what does the Raspberry Pi do that is better than the competition? And the top, the first one here, kind of sums it up really. Easy, it has a massive community, so loads of support, Google ability and accessories. I have an Odroid XU4 and it's good, but very limited in case choices and have had issues trying to problem solve in the past. If you want a case, an adapter, a bracket, it will be available for the Raspberry Pi if it's available for anything. 
Same with software. When you're trying to troubleshoot and find out information on a lot of these other boards, it's very, very hard to get any information on it. I've got over 600 videos alone on Raspberry Pi, and uh, part of that I wouldn't have been able to do without the whole community and, and being able to uh, download various different new things, like something like Pi Mega, like putting Windows 10 or 11 on a Raspberry Pi, uh, the excellent Android builds, the Chrome OS builds. There's so much you can do on a Raspberry Pi. But also the maker side is huge and low cost devices like a Pi Zero for certain uses are so good. You know my Motion iOS camera is brilliant with the Pi Zero 2W. But I'll put a link in the description if you want to read through it. There's some really long and thoughtful answers on there. It's worth having a look at. So I definitely will always mainly be covering the Pi. But I really enjoy trying different boards that come out there. And the Rockchip RK3588S in the Orange Pi 5 is very powerful for certain uses for like emulation uh, on the more recent systems works really really well and to finish up i thought i'd show some pies in the wild so this story from raspberry pi uh, shows some locker machines at taipei station which are running on raspberry pies uh, and then we had a raspberry pi spotted in france in a supermarket on reddit uh, then we had a pie spotted in universal studios hollywood there's one here spotted in morocco and also Monaco train station. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.